popular series like Harry Potter and Twilight have kept werewolves at the forefront of popular culture for years. But werewolf lore has actually been around for hundreds of years. In fact, throughout history there have been werewolf myths and folklore, and all the stories are pretty much the same. A man is bitten by another werewolf, and in turn becomes a half-man house wolf whenever the full moon rises. But if so many people have been talking about it for so long, is there really any truth to the werewolf myths? Is there really a werewolf virus that can be transmitted through bite? And if so, does that mean I'm going to need another rady shot? Here's everything you need to know about the werewolf virus. Now I know some of you may be thinking, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is real life, not another Twilight movie. Well, that's not entirely true. Because in 1537, a man named Petrus Gonsalves was born with a medical condition called hypertrichosis universalis. Hypertrichosis universalis has also been dubbed the werewolf syndrome because while it's an extremely rare condition, it causes excessive hair growth all over the body. There are two classifications of the condition, congenital and acquired. In cases of congenital hypertrichosis, the hair growth is caused by a genetic mutation and is present at birth. In cases of acquired hypertrichosis, the hair growth is caused by certain drugs or cancers. There have been about 50 cases of hypertrichosis reported since Gonsalves' death. Now, hypertrichosis isn't the only famous werewolf syndrome. In fact, there's another one called clinical lycanthropy. Now, lycanthropy is typically the disease in all the movies and books where a person turns into a werewolf. Symptoms include turning into a wolf, the constant desire to eat people, and howling at the moon. Now, clinical lycanthropy, emphasis on the clinical aspect of it, is a psychological disorder where a person believes that he or she can turn into an animal. Do you feel all right, Mr. Quebec? Me? I don't know. It's starting to feel strange. People suffering from it have reported turning into everything from frogs to bees to, of course, wolves. So yes, there are werewolf syndromes that cause symptoms similar to that of turning into a werewolf. However, none of these actually turn a human into a wolf and none of these are transmitted through bite. So to answer the big question, is there really a werewolf virus that can be transmitted through bite? The answer is no, there isn't. So sorry, Team Jacob fans, it's not real. If you're interested in the science side of horror, make sure to check out the New York Hall of Science website for more Halloween-related events. In the meantime, have a happy Halloween, everyone. Ah, no!